Stable Diffusion is a text-to-image diffusion model whose weights have been made public, and the creators of Stable Diffusion, who are Stability AI, made this move with the aim of democratizing image generation in the world. And now, with the public weights, anyone can generate their own images. So here are some examples of the images that we've created, but some really good examples are a selfie taken on Mars, good versus evil, or a photorealistic image of Iron Man making breakfast. But you can see all of these images and more if you like in our drive folder. I will leave a link to that drive in the description below. So there are two options how you can run stable diffusion and generate images. The first one is locally on your computer, but for that one, you're going to need a GPU. And I don't have a GPU, so I'm going to show you the second option, which is to run it on Google Colab. But one caveat there, you're going to need Google Colab Pro because we need a bit of a higher RAM than what is available with the free version of Google Colab to be able to create these images. So the steps that we're going to take to either run it locally on your computer or on Google Colab are more or less the same. But as I said in this video, I'm going to show you the Google Colab version. If you want a more detailed tutorial on how to do it locally on your computer, you can go and check out my colleague's article, Ryan O'Connor's article. I will leave a link uh, below this video or also somewhere in the corner here. All right, let's get started. And don't forget that if you create something fun, you can share it on Twitter and tag us. Our handle is at assemblyai. This collab notebook is also available for you through the link in the description, by the way, so you can go ahead and follow along as I go through it. So the first step is to change the runtime settings. As I said, once you change your Google Colab to Google Colab Pro, you can go to runtime, change runtime type, and make sure that your hardware accelerator is GPU. And then you also should make sure that your runtime shape is high RAM. So not standard, but high RAM, because we need a lot of RAM to be able to create the images. Next requirement is to install Miniconda. Uh, here we are working with Python 3.7. So we are going to install, download and install the Miniconda version that works with it. And then install it. and then initialize the conda environment with this comment, conda in its bash. Once that's done, we can clone the repository of the stable diffusion and then create and activate an environment for this model to run in. And lastly, the last thing that we want to do here is to download the weights of this model. So one thing to note here is that you might have realized we're getting the version one to four uh, version of this stable diffusion weights. Uh, but if you go to their release notes, you might see that they have a bunch of different versions. And basically version one to four is the highest one, as you can see here. And the other versions are a little bit less uh, trained with less data. And they make the explanation here is that each one was created from the checkpoint of the previous version and was trained for additional steps in specific variants of the data set. So basically the higher number you go, the more trained of a model that you're going to get. And the one we're getting right now is one to four. So once this is done, we can actually already create generate images. And this is the line that we should use to generate these images that also includes the prompt. So I will run this example and then I'll tell you what all of these things mean. All right, this is what you should see if everything went well and you generated an image. Um, where you're going to find the images is in the stable diffusion folder. There is going to be a samples folder and inside this folder, we're going to find our image. And when I download it, here is what that image is going to look like. So my prompt was, let's see what it was, a painting of a beluga whale sitting at a cafe. So it's not exactly sitting, it's lying on the table, but it is a beluga whale and it is a cafe. So. It's quite uh, impressive. And it's also a painting style, not a photorealistic style. So uh, let me go through these um, parameters or arguments that we're passing to this command and uh, what they are and how you can change them. So uh, Ryan has prepared a really nice summary of what each of these things are. So let's go through them one by one. Prompt, of course, is the prompt that you're passing to the model and the image that you want to create, the prompt for the image that you want to create. 
you can also pass a from file argument. And in that one, you can pass the name of a file that includes a lot of prompts. So not just one, but if you want to pass a bunch of prompts at the same time, you can use from file. You can use CKPT if you want to change the checkpoint that this model is run from. You can use out there to specify where you want to put the images that you created. So here our out there is basically just wherever we are, the directory that we're in. That's why it creates the samples folder exactly here. But if you want to create other folders, you can go ahead and do that. Some other important ones are uh, the diffusion steps. Here, normally the default value is 50. And Ryan has a really good example here of what changes when you use different diffusion steps. So as you can see, if you pass uh, only 10 diffusion steps, you're going to have less of a detail. And the higher you go with diffusion steps, the better of an image that you're going to get. But after 50 diffusion steps, there is not much of a big difference. So you might as well use 50 diffusion steps and that's also going to save you some time. Other than that, you can specify the number of samples that you want. Right now we are creating only one sample. Here, as you can see, number of samples is only one per prompt. But if you want to get more than one image per sample of per prompt, you can change this to whatever you want, two, three, five. Another thing you can change is the width and height of your image. So by default, there are 512, so 512 by 512 images. You can give them smaller numbers, but Ryan has observed in the article also that the bigger the image created, the better the image quality and also the caption alignment of the image. So you can see some examples here. When you pass it the prompt of Guy Fieri giving a tour of a haunted house, the smaller images cannot really capture the details of what's going on and the bigger images are able to capture it better. And one last thing you can change about width and height is the aspect ratio. So how does the width and height relate to each other? Um, Ryan has found that depending on the caption, you might need to use different aspect ratios. So maybe a vertical image would give you better results. Maybe a horizontal image would give you better results, but more or less for any general purpose, probably square as aspect ratios, so identical aspect ratios would work fine. So this is the general things that you should know about generating the images using this command. You know, you can generate more samples, you can change the height or width of the image, but one of the main parts of this command is the prompt, right? So the prompt that you're going to create is going to directly affect the image that you're creating. And there is such a thing called prompt engineering so making sure that you write a prompt that is going to be understood by the machine to be able to generate the best quality images. So let's think about that for a second. So there are a couple of things that you should think about when you're writing your prompts. So for example, if you write a prompt and you're not getting good results, that might mean that you might need to add something like an image of a photorealistic image of a drawing of sort of uh, phrases at the beginning of your prompt. Another information that you can pass to your machine is what kind of style do you want this image to be created in? So for example, if you're creating a painting, you can pass it the information of do you want it to be in an expressionist style or surrealistic style, for example. Or if you're creating an image or an illustration, you can pass it the information of what kind of aesthetic do you want it to be in, for example, cyberpunk aesthetic or cottagecore aesthetic, etc. And another thing that works really well is to pass it some information of style based on the person who made it. So an artist, so this could be a sculptor, a painter, you know, you can say in the style of Van Gogh. And because Van Gogh has a very specific style, you will be able to see it in the generated images. Or Salvador Dali, for example, has a very specific style. So when you say an image in the style of Salvador Dali, you're probably going to get some good results. All right, but that's it about generating images with stable diffusion. If you have this notebook, your job is going to be super simple. You just need to run through it and generate some prompts that that's going to be fun for you. Uh, if you have any questions, don't forget to leave a comment below. And once again, if you create something fun, don't forget to share it with us on social media. You can find us in basically any social media with at assembly AI. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing what you're going to create with this.